All right, uh, Brian Cage, Lance Archer, Ricky Starks. Either Lance Archer or Ricky Starks will be facing Brian Cage in the in the uh, whatever is the next round. So tonight, obviously, it's Ricky Starks and Lance Archer. Winner faces Brian Cage in the pre-show. I predict Ricky Starks is winning this match over Brian Cage. I agree. We have got Wardlow, Samoa Joe, and Powerhouse Hobbs. Three-way for Wardlow's title, not Samoa Joe's. I I predicted like a long, long, long time ago that the man who should eventually beat Wardlow was Powerhouse Hobbs. I said it here on this show. Now, some people would say, oh, well, it's way too early to beat Wardlow. I mean, you may be right, but let's be honest. What have they done with Wardlow? Is Wardlow going to be in the championship picture for the AW title anytime soon? Unlikely. Is he just going to be doing the exact same thing most likely? Yes. So, to me, Powerhouse Hobbs should win the title, and then Wardlow can chase him for a while and give him something to do. So I, I, will, uh, I will say Powerhouse Hobbs, but honest to God, I, I predict Wardlow probably retains. I'm going with Powerhouse Hobbs. I, I bet you there, I, there could be a surprise. I mean, look, Rick, Joe having both titles for a little while isn't the worst thing in the world, considering that ROH doesn't have a TV outlet. So if you decided to do that, I think that would be cool. But Powerhouse Hobbs would be my choice as well, too, for the reason that you mentioned about Wardlow chasing. And Hobbs has already used a bunch of minions and a bunch of goons and goofs already to try to go after people. Wardlow tearing through a bunch of them, power bombing somebody at all times, not the worst idea in the world. You know what else I would do is, uh, I mean, you have too many matches, so you wouldn't do it, but I would have made this a best of three falls match. The first fall is for the Ring of Honor title. The second fall is for the uh, whatever title Wardlow has, the TNT title. TNT. <laughs> and then, even though the first the titles have changed, then you've got the final, the the real dramatic third fall, where can some guy win either title? Can a guy who's a champion win both titles? And then, you know, whatever you do, you end up doing. But Did the guy win the second one, try to run out the clock in the third? I mean, there are interesting options there. I don't think with these three guys it would be right. But that scenario with somebody, say a Danielson and two other people or something like that, I think could be a cool idea. And we've got the Death Triangle, Pac, Penta, and Ray Phoenix versus Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks for the six-man titles. And let's be real. Death Triangle was never supposed to get these titles. The Elite was never supposed to lose these titles. He didn't he didn't make these titles without some sort of plan. So I I predict the Elite wins the titles in their first match back. I think the Elite win the titles and I think on top of that we could see a split in the Death Triangle yes. with that hammer, you know, coming into play because if you think about it, with whatever they're doing with House of Black, there's a really good chance that they're back as a trio. Perfect thing for the to have the elite feud with them as you go ahead and obviously do something there and change things up a little bit. Get Pac, Pac a partner and have him feud with Penta and uh, Phoenix. By the way, this person goes, why does Joe get a shiny belt and uh, Jericho has the dull old world title? Well, that uh, Jericho's belt is made of platinum. It just looks like steel. Or maybe it's white gold. It doesn't matter. Uh, Luchasaurus versus Jungle Boy Jack Perry in a cage match. Jack Perry's winning this match. Jungle Jack. And then ultimately, we got to still drag it out even longer until Christian can come back for that big blow-off match. Yeah, I wonder if he wins the match but then gets attacked by somebody else now who's joining Christian's army here because Luchasaurus could use a partner, especially if he's banged up anyway. I think he's much better off in tag teams. And Christian not letting this die. I can see somebody, if not tomorrow night, maybe on Wednesday night. Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal versus Sting and Darby Allen. Sting is going to submit Jeff Jarrett with the Scorpion Deathlock. I don't know if he submits Jeff Jarrett. He does. I, I could see a errant guitar shot hitting Jeff Jay Lethal, Satnam Singh doing some, something going wrong, and actually Sting or Darby Allen getting the victory over Jay Lethal. I can absolutely see that. I'll say this. And granted, I'm a huge Jeff Jarrett apologist. I have my entire life. There's no survivor in pro wrestling like Jeff Jarrett or the Jarrett family. But 
everybody that's complaining about this, it's him and Sting. It gives Sting somebody, I don't know. I, I know people want to see Sting fly off of things at all times and all that stuff, but this is a way to get Sting and Darby Allen on the show without them necessarily killing themselves and not having it affect anything else in the AEW stratosphere anyway. It's a self-contained feud, and I think there are far yeah. worse things than Jeff Jarrett. Well, I mean, there are. Him wrestling somebody else. So let's get this thing over with. Sting submits the guy, well, and he look. goes and he books towns. Well, hey, look, Jared, I'm, Jared is a character popping up once in a while is not the worst idea in the world. So if he doesn't lose here, that's fine. I think a far worse character, I mean, I'm sorry, but a far worse character is Sanjay Dutt. He is an annoying cartoon character out there. And that's I like Sanjay gimmick. Dutt. It sucks. Wow. It sucks and it's annoying. And I'm sorry. And again, I like Sanjay Dutt. It's not nothing against him personally, but in the mix of that show, I mean, honest to God, I think if you polled people, I I think he'd finish low on the list of people that uh, fans want to see. Wow. Well, they're not sorry. supposed to want to see him. He's a he's an annoying heel man. No, it's that go away heat, dude. Well, I don't it's think It's like so there's got to be somebody else that could be used in the spot sort of thing. Wow. But I get it with the whole Indian thing. I get it with Satnam Singh, but it's been overkill with that dude. Wow. Look, and I'm saying that about him. People. people say that about Jay Lethal, and I don't agree with that because I don't think Jay Lethal is overrated or annoying or any of that sort of stuff. But there are people that want Jay Lethal off TV you know, more than Sanjay Dutt. Can I move on now to Britt Baker and Soraya? <laughs> sure. Poor Sanjay Dutt. Golly, of all the people that take all this heat on this show with 500 Dude. people in her contract. My Please. goodness. Please. Uh, 500 people wrestling on the show? No, Another he's 500 on the show. Under... He's not wrestling. He's just out there as a manager for crying out loud. You know, listen, you know who I really like, but has been far worse than Sanjay Dutt on this, on this show? Is smart Mark Sterling. Okay. That's another one. That's it. No, they're two peas in the same pod, Brian. Listen. They are. No, there's a difference. Because Sanjay has never actively hurt anybody's title reign, okay? But every time somebody wins a title, and the first thing that happens is Smart Mark comes out, and one of his random dorks has to have a match with the champion, and it just halts them like that's a far bigger problem than Sanjay Dutt. And I like Smart Mark. And I'm not even saying take the guy off the show. But that, man, every time somebody wins a title, like if Hobbs wins his title, he's going to come out on the next show and here's going to come Smart Mark Sterling. And it's going to be like, what? Why? Like, why was that Wardlow's first feud with Smart Mark? He beat know. MJF. He won this know. title. And here comes Smart Mark Sterling. Anyway, Britt Baker and Soraya. Britt Baker should win. Soraya will. That's my prediction. I think Britt Baker cheats. She gets the victory. Overall, Rusty, they can always say a Rusty Soraya. And I think that ends up leading to her and Jamie Hayter. Because I think, I know we're not to it yet, but Jamie Hayter is going to beat Tony Storm. Nyla Rose, wait, no, I'm sorry. Uh, Tony, yes, Jamie Hayter is going to beat Tony Storm. That is my prediction also for the women's title. Jade Cargill will beat Nyla Rose and get this over with. My prediction. We've got uh, Jericho and Danielson versus Claudio. I'm sorry, Jericho, Danielson, Claudio, and Sammy in a four-way for the Ring of Honor title. And I, I fully expect Chris Jericho to retain. And something will happen, I believe, to lead to Jericho and Danielson at final battle. I think Jericho pins Sammy, but I think the same way. I think the you know the real feud for the title is going to be Jericho and Danielson. But the underlying feud is still going to be Jericho and Sammy. So, and we have got uh, Acclaim versus Swerve in Our Glory. I predict Swerve in Our Glory wins when Keith Lee turns heel, and they uh, they beat the Acclaim. We'll get Mike's thoughts in the main event after the break. Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Did you do a prediction? You didn't do a prediction for the tag match. Uh, yeah, when you skipped over, uh, I'm going with Jade as well, too. Uh, but uh, I'm going with the acclaimed, which I believe may be the only thing yes, that we differ on. It is. But uh, I could see, look, I could see the acclaimed getting the victory and Keith Lee still turning dirty after the match, you know, it, uh, shaking hands and he destroys both guys. There's a miscommunication or something like that where you can still turn Lee heel, but not take the belts off the acclaimed quite yet. 
See, I think it's a very obvious finish in that they're doing all their near falls. Referee goes down. Swerve grabs the belt. He holds it up. He's going to hit Bowens or whoever, and Keith stops him. No, I've been yelling at you about cheating for months. We're not. To- Give me that belt. And he takes the belt, and he whacks him. Turns heel. They win the titles. I think it's going to be something like that. Then the main event is Moxley and MJF for the title. And I have gone back and forth on this for weeks now. And uh, as of right now, as of right now, I believe that MJF is turning heel and winning the title. Which is interesting now that I think about it, because if they put that tag title match on last and you do the same finish in two matches, maybe they'll have to wix, uh, mix it up a little bit. But I'm not sure how. I don't know if he uses the brass knucks and William Regal sides with him or or what happens. But that's my prediction as of now. MJF goes full heel, wins the title from Moxley. He is a heel. <laughs> I think the question is, does William Regal turn heel? That's going to be interesting. Um He's been a babyface for weeks. I guess you could say that. I mean, he I, has for sure, a hundred percent. MJ, look, the, because when he was getting dumped through the table by the firm and all that. But I mean, again, he talks about being the devil all the time. I know he's backed off on some of the insults and all that stuff. But I don't look to me. He's moved somewhere towards the middle, and that's where he's at right now. This little island among himself. You know, with Stokely and his crew on one side and MJ were uh, Moxley and Regal and the whole Blackpool Combat Club on the other side. I see Regal turning heel. I can see Regal turning heel. I don't know if that's the best idea, but it's not like the Blackpool Combat Club with the people that are involved needs a mouthpiece or anything like that. So... Regal may be seeing some of himself in MJF and doing something to help him win. And still, to me, the smartest thing you can do is have him play that Ric Flair role. If people are cheering him, he can play to that. If he's wrestling W. Morrissey, then he's the biggest baby face in the world. If he's wrestling John Moxley, he's a dirty, lying, cheating prick. There are so many things you can do with, with MJF as a 84, 85 Ric Flair type of character. No matter where he goes, no matter who he faces, he can adapt to the scene and be the biggest thing. He ain't going to like this, but I don't like it. I think that he's, he's, he, is a, he is an incredible, incredible heel. And my issue with all of this is I don't even know if he can be an incredible baby face because I don't think we're going to find out. I advocate that we try to find out. Well, I think we and know. And see though. how far he can go as a babyface. And if it ain't working out as a babyface, then he should just be the biggest heel in all of wrestling. Don't don't halfway it where sometimes he's a heel, sometimes he's a babyface. Just have Well, if him. anybody can do it, though, it's it really is him. And he's unique enough with the, the fact, the way he cuts promos and, and how he does it. And he's where you can pull something like that off where everybody is aiming at this jerk, this prick, you know, this bastard who holds this title now hostage in his little world in his little Burberry world. And he can compete against everybody and still be a heel, still be the the biggest heel in the world, but be able to play it up in different ways, depending on who he's facing, because what does the devil care care if he's facing Malachi Black? You know what I mean? As opposed to facing Wheeler Yuta or something like that. So I think there's a way that you could absolutely do that. And I think, obviously, it's really early in his career. But this is not like in, in a football player or basketball player where his skills may all of a sudden deteriorate and diminish overnight. MJF, one thing we know about great heels, the classic heels of wrestling history is... When it's time to turn them baby face, they're great baby faces. And everything's been accelerated with him anyway. And I think he actually is. I mean, again, right now, you could pull it off and do it. I totally forgot this story until just now. And it happened when I was a kid. And so I think there's a decent chance that it could have been like a dream. Yes. And so, like, I was chopping the tree. And uh, I just remember looking up and all of a sudden, like, this was a weird thing. I remember I looked up and there were Ewoks in the tree. That's definitely a dream. And I saw it coming down, and all of a sudden I was like, I woke up later. <laughs> this is the weird thing he says. Yeah, it is. Well, it is weird. weird about it. It is weird. There were Ewoks in the tree. Yeah, that's weird. If you enjoy these videos for just seven dollars and ninety nine cents per month, you can enjoy full length editions 
of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.